What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, which was a very long time ago, guys, it has been over a couple weeks since I've last played this game. Uh, for those of you that aren't with me on Discord, uh, you may be out of the loop, and I apologize for that, but I just recently moved. So I'm in a new city, in a new state, and about to start a new job, and uh, it was a lot, so I didn't really have time for this, but... I finally have my desk set up, I finally have a recording set up, so bear with me if things are a little bit different uh, these first few episodes as I get more accustomed to this new environment, and I'm back, and I hope you guys are ready. I have probably forgotten a fair amount of stuff, however, I'm uh, you know ready to get back into this. So we had just finished up Gollum Bay, uh, we had all the robots and everything, and now we have somebody saying, hold up, governor. Oh, that's right, Luna's alive. Was that you, Luna? No. Then, Alice? You honestly think a voice that coarse could come from a throat as fine as this? <laughs> Alice is so full of herself. Then... That was, uh... That was me, mate. Is that Dio? Hey, over here. Sigma, look! What is that? <laughs> so the robot is talking. Blimey, that hurts. Ain't right for a fellow's back to feel like this. It's a robot. And it's talking. With an accent. Yeah, quite an interesting one as well. I should also note, this is so weird. For the first time ever, I have a dual monitor set up so I can confirm on one monitor that everything is recording and uh, proceeding smoothly, while on the other screen I can actually play the game, which is just revolutionary. It's crazy. It's been almost a decade of doing YouTube videos and I never had that set up. Can't help it, Flower. Didn't choose to talk like this, not by half. Now, Alice, darling. Do I rightly recollect you characterizing my speech as coarse? Why, that's right, cruel it is. Really think I asked for this? See, they figured they'd give us all, um, what you call them, personality? <laughs> this is so funny. Some tosser thought they'd give me this one. It ain't right, I tell you. So, what the heck are you? Cooper? If you're a barrel maker, I'm an astronaut. <laughs> right you are, me old son, right you are. Well, go on, have a butcher's, mate. What do I look like to you? Robot, you say? Nearly there, but they call us golems around here. Interesting, so obvious. oh, so that obviously. Golem Bay, right? Golem? Oh, I've heard of golems. They're sort of monsters, I guess, from Jewish folklore. For some reason, this music reminds me of Danganronpa a lot. They're made from clay and they look like men. They're supposed to do whatever their master or creator or whatever commands them to do. Interesting. Doesn't that kind of sound like Dio? Dio has a personality. I mean, I guess well, one, one thing we can take away from this experience is this person, this robot, could very well be mistaken for a person had they actually looked like a person, right? So we really can't distinguish between a robot and a person amongst our group. And this subservience to a particular master I can't help but think of when Dio said that they were following orders from a particular person and that was absolute and they would never in a million years you know reveal who that was 
Well, aren't you a clever bird? You are, of course, correct. The Golem of Myth is a clay creation that moves under its own power. Our spellings are might different, though. The original blokes are spelt. Are spelled G O L E M, but me and me mates are G A U L E M. This is such a funny accent they're giving. That's an acronym for General Purpose Autonomous Labor Electronic Machine. Truth to tell, it's a bit rubbish when you write it all out like that, but I figured they wanted to make sure they had the golem thing in there. What with us being robots and all. Um. So. Should I just call you Golem? Uh, that don't seem quite kosher. After all, all of me mates here are golems too. I guess part of what's what I'm curious about is why this particular one is active in talking to us. I couldn't very well call all of you lot human, could I? What should we call you then? Well, we've all got a product ID, and they're unique. I figured that's as good as a name as any. Hmm, a product ID. Are you ready for it to be Greek letters of the alphabet? And your ID is? Ah, darn. I thought it was going to be like some major reveal where it's like, I'm Gollum Delta. And then there's my buddy over there, Gollum Gamma. And we're going to find out, well, obviously, Sigma and Phi might would then be Golems, but that doesn't seem to be the case. GTMCMGOLM. Whoa! That's way too long. We can't remember that. You taking the Mickey out of me? <laughs> what a phrase. Never had a problem myself. Right then, let's just use the last bit, shall we? G O L M? Golem? Come on, man, that's just Golem! Well, I'll be buggered! <laughs> Can't say I ever noticed that before. <laughs> sure, it's a strange coincidence, isn't it? <laughs> this guy's so funny. It's incredibly compelling for a robot, right? Alright, Golem, you said Alice, darling, a little bit ago, right? What, a gentleman can't say something to a nice, pretty young bird, eh? No, I don't care if you call her darling. What I'm saying is, you called her Alice. How did you know her name? <laughs> oh, she isn't the only one of you lot whose name I know. I know who you are, Sigma. And you too, Luna. Huh. Well, this is certainly an unexpected twist. How does the Golem know the names of some of the participants, right? I'm right familiar with all nine of you. How? You don't know? They've got cameras all over this place. So have the robots just been sort of passively watching the whole game happen up until this point? Then again, the lenses aren't much bigger than a screw. Oh, lovely. But part of what that means is that these golems, if they've been observing everything up until this point, they may have actually seen something and thus have information that's incredibly crucial to figure out some of the mysteries of this place, right? Right. 
And they're all hidden away, so I suppose I can't really blame you for missing them, you know? Now, as I was saying, there are these cameras, you see. And all of the data they record gets sent off to the mainframe in real time. So I just gave the main core a ring, got those videos, and now I know everything you've done. Then... do you mind showing us a whole bunch of what's been happening? Does that mean... You're Zero Junior? <laughs> Core Blimey, are you bleeding serious? <laughs> what is he saying? You've got to be off your box if you think I'm Young Master Zero. The Young Master is the right proper AI. What supervises all the electronic bits and bombs in this place? My humble self and those of the misfortune to be like me are more akin to computers terminals, who are merely borrowing a little bit of the central core. So golems are kind of like Zero Junior's servants? Hmm, no, not quite, Governor, not quite. I'd say me and me mates here are more like uh, arms and legs, right? Now, you lot don't have brains in your arms and legs, do you? Of course not. Right you are, missus. <laughs> It'd be all sorts of nasty <clears throat> if your elbows and that lumpy bit on your ankle was all packed with brains. <clears throat> well, we're like your arms or legs. The golem's seat of consciousness, so to speak, ain't in the head. Fact of the matter is, it's not anywhere in the body. Which makes a fellow wonder, where is it? In the mainframe? Yeah, they've got to be remotely accessing it. Spot on. So that part of me what thinks is in the mainframe. Here. Everything this here, body sees and hitters and what have you, that all gets sent back there. Then the mainframe does some sort of computery, jiggery, pokery, and comes up with some decisions, and those decisions beget commands. <laughs> those commands get sent out over the wireless like boop boop boop, and eventually my body picks them up. Finally, those commands cause actions, what move the various bits of my body. That's why this thing's like a computer terminal, you see. The body's just an output device of sorts. If we were talking about one of them personal computers here, you could say a golem's kind of like a, a monitor. Huh? Wait a minute. Then wouldn't that make you part of Zero Junior? I suppose you could say that. What with us sharing the mainframe and all. But I don't know crap about this game he's running. That part of the mainframe is locked away from the rest of us. 
I'm an independent core. Zero and I are two different blokes. You recollect what Golem stands for, eh? I'm autonomous. Hmm. But if that's the case, your hands and feet analogy doesn't really make sense. My arms and legs aren't autonomous. They don't just move on their own. You sure? <laughs> you sure, Governor? I watched you cross your arms just now. Huh? And now you're frowning and your forehead's getting all wrinkly. Did you do these things on purpose? When you cross your arms, were you thinking? Right then, let's cross them, shall we? Curl on down then, mouth. Oh, and eyebrows, I'd be much obliged if you'd squeeze in a bit. There's a good pair of looks. <laughs> That's what you was thinking, innit? No, didn't reckon so. I figure you did all of that subconsciously. Ain't no man on earth who says to himself. Feeling a mite nervous, I'll just twitch me leg around a bit. Who's thinking real hard about something and says to themselves? Well, think I'll just give the old loaf a scratch, that ought to help. How's about when you reach for your tea? When you turn a page in your book? <laughs> or what about when your eyes just go straight for the pear on that bird you fancy, eh? <laughs> List goes on, me chums. But all of those things are your subconscious at work. True, when part of your body does something, it's because your brain said so. But that doesn't mean your conscious mind is involved. Fact is, it can't be. If your brain had to deal with all the piddly bits of living, it'd make you balmy. That's how us golems and the young master get along. You, uh, got it all sorted now, chums? Then you're saying that Zero Jr. is the central part of the mainframe, and the golems are like his hands and feet, that are influenced by and regulated by, per se, the, the thoughts and desires of Zero Jr., but aren't, you know, but are working in a way that's well, autonomous, right? They're programmed to be autonomous in a particular way that serves Zero Junior's needs. So you could say. Righto. <laughs> Blimey. Guess I shouldn't be talking about such heavy rubbish, eh? My shoulders are all stiff. <laughs> You're a robot. How can your shoulders get stiff? I mean, the same way that ours can, right? They've got joints. I'm sure they, they rust. They tighten up over time. Scratched. And you said your back hurt earlier. Are you just messing with us? Or is your personality that of an old man? Yes, I did. And no, I ain't. Me back is the right mess it is. Last maintenance check, they just left me here. I've been on this bed here for years. The lubricant for me joints is all gummed up. Every time I move, it hurts. 
But why did you wake up again after all this time? Why do you think, love? Because you lot turned me on is why. Especially that other missus over there. <laughs> this robot. <laughs> oh yeah, that button on top of the safe. Right you are, Governor. Can you come with us then? The others need to see this. No, I can't. And more's the pity. I can only go as far as this cable here will let me. It is worth noting, at least I think, that this cable's placement is... Well, is it the same? No, it's slightly lower. No, it is, it is similar to where Kay's little, I guess, key area is on the back of their neck. Is that related? Possibly, but possibly not. Something I just want to keep in mind. I got internal batteries, but they're knackered. Matter of fact, that's why I was in here for maintenance in the first place. Same goes for these other blokes, too. Of course, they ain't connected to a power cable like I am, so they aren't going anywhere anytime soon. I see. But a functional robot could have gotten far away from this cable if their internal batteries were functioning well. Which is good to know, because that means that any one of these people that's been out and about for the past 24 hours, give or take quite a few hours, um, it could be a robot, right? A golem. So, you aren't gonna answer my question? Huh? What question is that? I ask you how your shoulders can get stiff if you're a robot. Right, right, so you did. Not sure why you've got a bug about that particular issue, though. Well, I mean, I guess it's not really important, but... I'm just curious, I suppose. Curious, are you? That's a good word, that is. A good, powerful word. The kind of word that'll set any robot's heart aflutter. Let's get you sorted then, shall we? Just let me your lords and peers for a tick. So, how can a robot get stiff shoulders? And what does pain mean to a robot? Tell me, Gov, you ever heard of the Chinese room? Hmm... I don't think so. Without waiting for an answer, Golem launched into his explanation. Somewhere, a pretty young girl is trapped in a tiny room. The door of the room has a slot that a number of Chinese people outside the room can use to slide slips of paper to the girl. On the pieces of paper are questions written, naturally, in Chinese. Unfortunately, the young lady has no idea what the questions say. But then how could she? She's never learned Chinese. Apart from a Hong Kong action movie or two in college, she's never even heard it. So for this unfortunate young lady, each note looks like nothing more than a bunch of strange symbols. Before she was locked away, she was given an order. Specifically, she was told to write an appropriate response to each question she received, and slip that answer back through the slot. Once the Chinese questions begin to show up, however, she finds herself at a loss. Oh dear, she says to herself, why, I can't read these at all. Whatever am I to do? It's at that moment that she spots a bookshelf. The bookshelf is filled with thick books. Upon examining them, she discovers that they are some sort of Chinese phrase books. They have, act they have no explanation of what anything means, but show Chinese responses to Chinese questions. Am I supposed to use these? The questions keep coming. More and more and more of them. She finds the set of characters that correspond to the set of characters on the paper, and carefully writes out the indicated response. How's it going? It's awful. Please get me out of here. Are you hungry? Yes, I am. I haven't eaten anything since breakfast. 
Here they give her some twice cooked pork. Are you full? Yes, although I don't think my stomach liked it very much. Do you have a boyfriend? Yes, I'm dating a reggae dancer. When was your first kiss? When I was 14. He was a grade ahead of me in school. What color of underwear are you wearing? Black. What's the first thing you're going to do when you get out of this room? Beat the stuffing out of whoever's sending me these questions with the pan you cooked that twice cooked pork in. All these questions were written in Chinese. And the answers were also written in Chinese. I guess this is sort of an analogy where a robot doesn't understand what the question is, doesn't understand what the answer really means, but it can learn the relationship between the two, right? So if a robot's joints are stiff or not functioning well for whatever reason, the robot doesn't feel pain, doesn't feel the stiffness, but understands that they are observing and that's what's like happening, right? That's the reality, that their joints are not functioning properly. And a common response to that phenomenon is to complain about that stiffening, those joints, right? And so they do. But it's not like they understand either of those things. But they've just learned that relationship, right? All the young lady did was accurately copy the symbols from the phrase books onto the slips of paper, with no idea what any of it meant. Incidentally, she doesn't have a dance her boyfriend. In fact, she's never even kissed a boy. Also, she's wearing white underwear. Anyway. Um, and it also goes to show the importance of the programmer, right? The book that she picked up completely determined what answers she gave. And in the same sense, the person who programmed a particular robot or provided the sample of, you know, data from which the robot learned that relationship, right? Or learned what appropriate responses were completely determines how that robot's going to behave. And so I think that's part of the analogy here as well that's important to note. Um, yes? Is there any particular reason this girl is, um, pretty? Or, or why we need to know what color underwear she's wearing? Can't say there is. Just tickles my fancy, I guess. But the prettier the bird is, the more fun the story is, innit? Exactly! <laughs> Classic Sigma. What? What? Sigma's like, that's the only thing I understood. Right, well, what I wanted to say was this. All them Chinese blokes outside the room didn't know nothing about them books what she had. So it follows that they would have thought whoever was inside spoke Chinese, just like them. You see? After all, far as they can tell, they're having a nice little chinwag with one of their countrymen. Chinwag. <laughs> what a term. Um, okay, interesting, but what does that have to do with your shoulders? Or robot feeling pain? Well, I mean, it shows how a robot can interact somewhat seamlessly with humans. You think? I feel pain when my body's having a spot of bother. Well, hold up, mate. This ain't right. We keep this up and we're buggered. If things really go pear-shaped, we'll be brown bread. So says the central computer to itself, seeing that things are a bit bollocksed. In the interest of extricating my body from its unpleasant predicament, the mainframe sends out a signal over the wireless. And my software interprets that signal as pain, and I stop doing whatever daft thing I was doing. It's the same, innit? 
just like the Chinese room. So you're saying that robots feel pain differently than humans, right? Use your loaf, Missy. You listen to a word I've said? A human feels pain when you do something you shouldn't, like sit your bum down on attack, right? Same thing for us robots. If you feel like being clever about it, there ain't really that much different between a human and a robot. Forget about all that mainframe and signal bollocks, and us golems ain't that different from the bird in the room. So, think about it, love. How do you know humans ain't the same, just without all the electronic-y pony? What if, when someone asks you a question, all you're doing is pulling out the right answer from some sort of phrase book in your brain? Ain't no way to prove that, of course, but far as I can see, there ain't no reason to. I mean, it's all the same, innit? If you're actually a thinking creature, or if you're just some kind of language processing machine. All what matters is if the person next to you does what a human ought. Looks like a person, acts like a person, and talks like a person, then it's probably a person. You want to live a normal life? That's all you need to know. Pretty compelling, but also pretty scary, right? Hey, can I ask you something? Lay it on me, Governor. Why'd you stop us? Ah, right you are, mate, right you are. Got so carried away I near forgot. Haven't seen anyone for yonks, and I got a mite excited is all. Just spit it out. Right, right. Right, right. Well, there was something I wanted to tell you a lot. What was it? Patience, darling. Now, I know I might look a bit out of sorts at the moment, but I ain't really supposed to. Same thing for the rest of the blokes here. Fact is, the reason we look a bit like skeletons is because we are a bit like skeletons. There's this special artificial biological tissue, what's called ABT. When a golem's all new and shiny, they've got on a nice suit of ABT over that metal skeleton. And we're aware that Luna is already, well, cognizant that this exists. This technology. Makes us look right human, it does. Even feels like real skin with pores, a little bit of hair, and a few pimples, scars, and the like. 
us. Truth to tell, I doubt you'd be able to tell the real from the fake, even if it was right in front of you. See, right in the middle of... Command violation. Whoa. Huh. So, see, right in the middle of maybe referring to uh, the group of the three of us, there's potentially a golem. Or maybe right in the middle of some sort of activity, there was a golem, and we didn't even notice, or something like that. Either way, this robot's about to get punished. Rogue processes detected. Product ID GTM CM GOLM. Executing emergency deactivation. Oh, rip golem. Yikes. Unit GTM CM GOLM now inactive. No other rogue process is detected in additional golem platforms. Calling it now, whoever the golem is amongst us, when they are inevitably pushed to help out the other humans for whatever reason and break a command, that's how they're going to go. And it's going to be a shock because that might be the first time we find out they're actually a golem. Returning to surveillance mode. Did, did Zero just shut him down? It looks like it. Darn it. I wonder what he was trying to tell us. See, right in the middle of... Right in the middle of what? Ain't that the question. An Ambidex gate has been opened? What? Forty-five minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. I need to refresh myself on the timeline of the past couple episodes. This isn't the one earlier that Dio starts intentionally, right? This is an even later one. What the heck? Someone on the other team must have opened it. Crap, why would they do that? We have to hurry. However, of course, we're going to hurry <clears throat> in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's been a while since I've recorded, so it was fun to get back into it. Fun to re-see, you know, revisit a lot of the characters from Virtue's Last Reward. Get re, uh, you know, acclimated to the story and everything. And to try out this new recording space, which I think is actually going to work out pretty well. The only thing is I had to turn off the AC to do this, and so getting a little bit toasty right now, and we're going to have to call it uh, at that. But uh, one other thing is, because everything is really busy at the moment, I was doing daily uploads for some you know, few weeks, and I don't think that's going to be very feasible going forward. So it'll probably be every other day on the weekdays uh, for three uploads for this series a week. And I hope you guys understand and are looking forward to those uploads when I'm able to get them. So... Anyways, it's good to be back. Hope you guys are happy to see me back and are looking forward to the next episode just as much as I am. But until that next episode, this is Movement Night Zero, and this mission is complete.